Paranormal Dimensions is a regular feature on Mondays on the Paranormal UK radio network. Estimated in the last two hours, three million people have moved out along the roads to the north. Hutchison River Parkway is still kept open for motor traffic. Avoid bridges to Long Island, hopelessly jammed. All communication with Jersey Shore closed ten minutes ago. No more defenses. Our army is wiped out. Hello, this is Philip Kinsella, and you're listening to the Paranormal UK Radio Network, the UK's biggest paranormal network, and this is Paranormal Dimensions with David Young. For me, this is the kind of show that I like doing most, where you basically just have a freewheeling discussion, have a chance to go off on topics. That's what's going to make you an outstanding player in the field. Just keep doing it. Hello and welcome to another Paranormal Dimensions. Thank you for those kind words, Peter Robbins. And thank you for that intro, Philip Kinsella. Now today's guest is Ronald Kinsella, Philip's twin brother. And they are almost identical as most of uh, you may know. <laughs> uh, Philip was on a while back, but today I've got Ronald on because he's got a new book in the process. I don't think it's going to be released just yet. Uh, I believe the new one is going to be coming out in the new year. So without any further ado, let's uh, get Ronald on. Hello, Ronald. Welcome to the show. Hello, David. It's a pleasure to be on it. Well, no, it's a pleasure to have you on. And um, as you know, a few weeks back, or was it about a month or so back, I had Philip on. It might have been more than a month. I don't know. I lose track of time with all this. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, it, you know, I'm so pleased to have you on because you've got your new book out, Digital, Digital Demon, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Yes. But, uh, how have you been? You, you okay? Yes. Um, as as uh, I, I, I said um, that uh, I haven't been too good this year. I've had a, an, a, an operation. I was put under general. And the results were good, but um, there's still a few problems. And um, so it's been uh, quite a, a rough year for Philip and myself as well, because Philip hasn't been too good either. Mm. So we've both been a bit poorly and under the weather, but we are getting better anyway. So that's the main thing, David, you know, just getting better. It's it's just this COVID-19 um, that has hampered things as well for all of us. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. uh, and... Uh, you know, it's uh, but um, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm, I'm, I'm improving. Yeah, we know everyone wishes you well because that's obviously the reason you've not been doing your Twin Souls um, shows as well, isn't it? Partly. That's right. Um, it's um, we we went b- before I had the operation. I thought for the night, and and of course he's, he's had to go through for some procedures as well. And we thought it probably best that we postpone it. And Irene, Alan, and Mark Johnson have been absolutely smashing. They've agreed to it just to postpone it. We were going, to, we, we we were worried that uh, we would put it out, so we we're going to cancel it. But this, we decided to just postpone it, which they have uh, very kindly agreed to. So we'll we'll go back to it very soon. Um, but and that's very good of them to do that. They're very lovely. Mark Allen, uh, Mark Mark Johnson and Irene Allen have been absolutely wonderful. So. Uh, they've agreed to that, so it will come back on soon. Yes. Well, I'm sure they won't want to let you go anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, is there a time frame? Was it sort of a end of August, September time? Uh, perhaps the end of August, almost definitely September. We have a few guests lined up. Um, I think the lovely Kathleen Marden, being one of them, who has very kindly agreed with Philip to come back on uh, this show to discuss about her books. Yeah, so that would oh, be good. lovely. 
Yeah, the lovely Kath- Kathleen Marden. Yes. Yeah, I've got her lovely. lined up actually, so I have to. I'll delay my one for a little while because uh, I think I'm going to make it sort of like towards the end of the year to have Kathleen on. Yes. And um, yeah, yeah. Because I, I think she'll probably be on a few shows, won't she? Over the next yes, year. yes. I mean, she's a, a lovely lady, yeah. a, as well as um, Earl Grey Anderson who's been uh, absolutely lovely. He's a lovely gentleman who's part of MUFON as well. I mean, uh, Kathleen Marden is MUFON. Uh, but they've been absolutely lovely, uh, inspirational people who are very patient and very kind and, and very brilliant, I mean, you know, with their research and their work. Yeah. I mean, obviously, MUFON's gone, had a few troubles over the years, hasn't it? Especially recently with their latest uh, uh, departure. Yes, yes, but, that's, um, um, yes, we, which we won't discuss. No, <laughs> I, I think it's best not to. <laughs> I think it's like any organisation though, I mean you have the good, the bad and the ugly, you know, it's like anything really, isn't it? But, uh, it'll be fine, it'll, it'll uh, bounce back, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm you sure. You know. I'll tell you what, now, last week I had a guest on, made Marcus Allen. Now, it keeps up a little bit of a rumpus with a few people, but I think, because Marcus <laughs> doesn't believe that we landed on the moon. And I'd just mm-hmm. like to get your opinion. I mean, my opinion is still that we went to the moon. I can't get myself out of that belief you know, yeah. that we didn't go yeah. and we, we haven't yeah. been there. What's your opinion on that? Well, I'm going to play safe and basically say I don't know. I cannot say. I'm not saying we did well, I'm not saying we didn't. Oh, I can't allow what that. Is, <laughs> what, is, what is peculiar yeah. is that the very clever uh, people with the photographs or the photography, uh, they've been analysing the shadows yeah. and they don't quite match or the crosshairs on the camera don't quite match. And, um, I mean, can we trust those pictures? We don't know. This is the thing. Also, they were alleged to have seen UFOs on the moon. Mm. Now, I did hear someone mention that that could have been a studio light that accidentally went off, or it didn't. Now, I cannot say. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be absolutely terrible and sit on the fence. <laughs> I would be. I'm. I would be absolutely arrogant to state that we did not go to the moon. I cannot say. Mm. It would be wonderful if they did. Here is another thought. Could it be possible that they did send man to the moon, but they had two sets? One was the real one, and one was the stage one, in case any hiccups occurred, you know? Yep. So that they could land on the moon, and if anything went wrong, they could quickly switch to the studio. Because we must remember, it was the space, the age of the space race. They couldn't afford to let anything happen. And if something did occur, we must understand they'd never been to the moon before, so they didn't really know what to expect. They probably had an idea, but they didn't know what to expect. So to save Grace, they had two sets, perhaps the film running of them originally going to the moon and the studio as a backup. I mean, you know, that's all I can say. I don't know. And that's not setting stone. It's only a theory. Mm. But as, as to say that they landed on the moon or not, I cannot say I don't know. Uh, it looks, I mean, come on, it does look realistic. I mean, it's very, whoever, if, if it is a fake, the effects are absolutely incredible. They really are. I mean, they are um, breathtaking, especially for the time. So, who knows, David? Yeah. Who knows? Well, Marcus absolutely pointed out some anomalies, and I do believe there are anomalies. I, I don't think for one minute that NASA has told the whole, tr- whole truth about their space program. Yeah, no, nowhere near it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the possibility of it being a, a studio get-up and also the actual moon landing, I'll go with that. I think it's a possibility. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I, do, I do. I think they would have had... Uh, they, they would have had um, uh, a backup if something went wrong because this is the greatest, most monumental time in American history and they couldn't afford, and I can understand from their point of view, they could not afford anything to go wrong. So, But I'm not saying they did, I'm not saying they didn't. I can't say because I wasn't even, uh, well, I was born that year, but I wouldn't have known it. So yeah. I'm, not quali- <laughs> I'm not really qualified to actually answer that question directly. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to play safe. <laughs> yeah, you see, that's the problem with me, you see. I'm a bit older than you, and I was around, and I was actually working in the electronics business, uh, yes. uh, military electronics. So yes. I, I, was work- I, I know the type of electronics that there was 
going on, you know, at that time. Yes. Unfortunately, I am I am that old, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw the, I saw the change from valves to transistors, and I yeah, you know, and we worked on very very small things that you wouldn't think we you know that were around in, in that day. Now, I'm talking That's about right. I'm talking about sort of like 67, 68, 69. Um, yes. You know, that was like the trans- transition into transistors and, and and the early microchips as well. Yes, um, the progression was astonishing, wasn't it? Was, it? The yeah. progression from the valve to the transistor to the microprocessors was astonishing. Yes, I mean, I mean, I was born uh, in the age of the computer um, world. I mean, when they first introduced the very first home computer, I was a, a child. So we basically have seen the dawn of the electronic era completely explode, mm. you know, from its very humblest beginnings. And they were clever, yeah. the scientists and the mathematicians, to build them. Absolutely superb uh, what they did. But yes, I understand what you mean, yes. So you were aware of the technology that was being uh, used, uh, that could have been uh, employed yeah. by NASA as yeah. well to actually land man on the moon. I think if you try, if you really do have a dream and you set out, you can do it. Nothing is impossible. This is the thing. Nothing is impossible, even space flight, you know. Nothing is impossible. No. And I, bet that I believe that, and we must understand, they poured enormous, enormous resources and funds into that project with the Saturn rockets. I mean, you know, the amount of brain power involved and in lives, getting of course. to the moon. That's right. They had their fair share of disasters, but that comes with progression. So, but, so it would be nice to think that they did land man on the moon. As I said, I'm not saying yes or no because I'm not qualified to do that. No. But it would be nice to think that they did. Well, I think, uh, if you're like me, I think we've just got to go with the fact that NASA told us that they did. And you've just got to accept that, oh, you know, that they, they, I, I tell it to me, it's just too many people involved to have something like that covered up. You know, yes, but I, I, it's no, it's no different, David. You're absolutely right. Can we trust anything, really? If you question well, that, how yeah. can we trust anything like black holes or space? We, we, we can't see them unless you're looking through a telescope. But how do we know they're real? We, we're trusting in people mm. or an authority who will publish this or broadcast it. So we're, our trust is always mainly in the hands of others. You see what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, sure. Yeah, because I, well, I mean, we can't prove Australia's there only because we're told it is. <laughs> you know. That's right. I mean, there <laughs> we is, see it there on is, film. There is a limit to that, though, when they're flat earthers yeah. going on about the earth. No, I'm sorry. I have a theory on that. It was quite um, uh, logical. Um, the theory that we are not on a flat planet; we are on an orb. Mm. Um, I think that's ridiculous. So there are limits. You know, when we say we don't know for sure, but we can. We're, we're smart enough to ascertain things yeah. you know we, we're born to be educated on certain things that w- we can choose to believe or not and also the educational system which has a lot of holes in it by the way I don't mind telling you especially now Absolutely. but we, we're conditioned to believe in something so it, it, as we grow as we get older it's up to us to like the UFOs and like the spirituality it's up to us to decide if the people don't agree with it that's fair enough if they agree with it, that's fair enough. It's like the moon landed. If they believe it happened, that's fair enough. If they don't, it's fair enough. Yeah, sure. I mean, with the flat earth theory and all this social distancing, it's actually pushed quite a few people over the edge, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about it, everyone, if you've seen no, it. No, I did like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I suppose we better leave. Oh, I'll tell you, now, before we go off, what about that, do you believe that aliens have been on the moon? A distinct possibility. I do believe it could be possibly used as a base by them. Which ones, I don't know, because I, I'm not too familiar with the species. They talk of the greys. Mm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think they'd visit there. I don't know. But yes, for extraterrestrials, yes, it could possibly well have been a base or is a base for extraterrestrials. That is always a possibility. Yeah, because Marcus brought up something that hadn't really occurred to me. Uh, the fact that the distancing of the moon and the sun, like the sun's approximately 93 million miles away, the, the, uh, the moon is uh, 250,000 miles away, give us like a few few miles, but when the yeah. moon, the moon to- can totally eclipse the sun. Now, that seems yes. quite an amazing coincidence. Yes, uh, and we must, rem- we must remember also that when they uh, landed man on the moon, 
um, they only explored a tiny portion of it. It's only a tiny fragment has been uh, uh, filmed. You know, it is a it's a big it's a big rock. You mm. know, but it's only a, only a small fragment has been filmed. So we, you know, it, it's quite possible that there are alien bases on the moon. That I, my, my, my grandfather always, my lovely grandfather, always um, told me to to accept possibilities, to never be tunnel visioned. We mm. mustn't be tunnel visioned. If we if we denounce something immediately, if we negate it. Then of course we have we were the tunnel vision we have the tunnel vision we mustn't we must always accept or consider possibilities it is possible that they have got bases on the moon that I don't doubt as there could be possibly bases on Mars or an ancient civilization that once resided there uh, uh, before the stratosphere was shattered um, evidently there was some kind of disaster or something with the planet. Mm. Something happened, something, because they believe there used to be water. If there's water, there's an atmosphere and a stratosphere. So it, it's quite possible, absolutely, David, yes, I wouldn't be surprised at all if it was a base for extraterrestrials. Mm. And whether astronauts have actually seen anything is uh, another other thing that's open to question. I can tell that's you that right. um, in 1968, when Apollo 8... When, uh, was it, eight? yeah, it was 68. When Apollo 8 went, actually went round the far side of the moon, the dark side as we call it, and I can remember the excitement and the suspense of waiting for, because they all went quiet, didn't they? Because they couldn't get the, the signal. Yes. And yes. I can remember the, the excitement and the suspense of waiting for them to come round the other side and the excitement when they, you heard their, their voices, you know, which is yes. Frank Borman and uh, Jim Lovell and Bill Anders. I've got all three of them. <laughs> yes, I mean, as I said, a, a re remarkable accomplishment. You know, I mean, the, a man would push so hard. Uh, I believe it was John Kennedy, ironically, who was the man who was the forefront of pushing for us to land on the moon. Sure. You know, so he was really excited about it. And he died um, before he, 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 you know, he didn't see it, did he? So, no, he was a, disgracefully, disgracefully murdered. And I think he was a man. I think he was a man who was. All right, he wasn't a saint as who is, but he had dignity mm. and he had pride, and I loved him. I mean, I wished I'd. He was the one of the only presidents I would have loved to have shaken his hand, yeah. to shake his hand, because I really admired him, and I think what happened to him was a disgrace, you know. Yeah. And I've seen, I've seen all the controversy, I've seen all the the footage of. Um, his assassination, and it wasn't Lee Harvey Oswald at all who I shot agree. him. They're, they're it wasn't him. It was. It came from the front. Yeah. It's, um, they, they, and also the magic bullet theory. We go through all that. But yes, I, I greatly admired that president, even though I wasn't alive then. I, I greatly admired uh, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with put, giving our opinions on here. I, I think that Lee Harvey Oswald. If he was involved or not, one way or the other, he was set up by the by the CIA, FBI, probably probably both. And, yes, um, he, he was set up, and then he was conveniently shot to silence yeah. the the actual, the, so he couldn't get to court. They 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 would they, they just basically did a clean up job. Yeah. Um, to get rid of him, and I think that's appalling. But well, that's the way they worked then, didn't they? They is, didn't yeah. like. I mean, him. when you see the connect, there were connections between Jack Ruby, who killed um, Oswald. And, mm. Oz, and uh, Jack Ruby was connected with uh, the Mafia, who were connected yes. to the FBI and the CIA. Yes, you know? so Hoover, yes, they, Hoover. They, they yes, were all connected, right. they all knew each other. You know, yes. So there was something going on there. I mean, there was. About now, now, there were stories about um, Kennedy was going to release um, um, the truth about aliens. Mm. Now, I don't I'm, know if I'm, that's true or not, but I don't know what your, your theory is on that. No, I, I don't, I don't conform to that. I think it was something to do with, uh, arms or something to do with a lack of, def it was to do with money, evidently some profit being lost on a major scale or some kind of war that wasn't implemented or he tried to stop it. Well, it was the, the, the uh, Vietnam War, was it? Yes, right, yes. I don't, I don't think it had anything to do with aliens with him. Yeah, because there is, the, there are stories that that's why, uh, Marilyn Monroe was murdered. Although that, that, it's not official that she was murdered because she was well, committed suicide, I, but uh, <laughs> I did say that he wasn't a saint, but I yeah. don't think he did it himself. But I think perhaps other people did, um, just as they did with Princess Diana. Yeah, a clean-up operation. I can't prove it, of course. No, but none of something us can, yes. very. I think we're intelligent enough to know that something 
there was some foul play involved with the lovely Marilyn Monroe as there was with Princess Diana. So yes, always a, always a conspiracy. But you see, that's what they like. You see, when they yeah. do this, they'll know it'll be hidden within the annals of conspiracy and we will never know. Yeah. And they are never going to release those files. They'll never release no, them. No, because there was they'll a lot never. of skullduggery going on. Because Peter yeah. Lawford was um, related to Kennedy, was his brother-in-law. Now, Peter Lawford was a good friend of Frank Sinatra's and Marilyn Monroe was had an affair with Frank Sinatra. So there was a lot of connections going on there. Yes, it's very <laughs> ironic, isn't it? Very ironic. But I did like the president. And yeah. as I said, I'd love to have shaken his hand. I tell you what, he puts a lot of the new ones to shame. He did put a lot of the, he put the, he puts a lot yeah, of the new ones to shame. Yeah, he had his yeah. faults. So I agree with you. But uh, yeah, but he was a digni- he was a dignified man. Mm, I agree. Anyway, I guess we've gone off on a bit of a tangent there. <laughs> it's great to, because it's great on, on your show to, to broaden uh, um, not only about the UFOs, but also the controversies uh, in the world. As I said again, with the President Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe, it's always left in a, a, a soup of dirt, because we it can is. never find out. It becomes a conspiracy and, and, and a very dark one at that. And we're, we're left scratching our heads. And you have some brilliant researchers out there who are good at putting the pieces together. Mm. Um, so, you know, but it is interesting nonetheless to see, you know, it forms several or many pictures of the possibility of why they shot the president. Yeah, it does. But um, I don't think it was with him to do with aliens at all. I think it was to do with, with, with um, that old devil call money yeah so or profit loss of it or something to do with that i just have my suspicions it was to do with that yeah. it's something to do with the war you know oh, it was definitely something to do with vietnam because mm. it all um i think he was trying to you know sort of basically bring everyone back home but as That's soon as right. he was but as soon as he was murdered and we will say murdered you know mm. assassinated whatever mm. uh the, the war actually um took off again didn't it well, and they and always it was, say it was refinanced that's Johnson. right. There's profit in war. There's always mm. profit in war. I hear this again and again. There's profit for some, for some. Yeah. The ring, the ringleaders. Yes. The monsters who who puppeteer these these operations. Um, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I guess we better start talking about your books. <laughs> now, you you've just had a very good best a good seller. I mean, I think it was number one on the on the some Amazon lists called the Archons. Yeah, it was on Lulu. Uh, um, I, I, because I will explain that Philip and I used to have publishers, but I'm for, and it took so long to find them, um, because you, you keep getting rejected and rejected. It took 20 years. So we finally find them, and unfortunately, they both end up passing away, which was very sad. So in the mm. end, this wonderful age of technology, uh, we find that you can do them yourselves. So that's when I decided to do the Archons um, and publish it on Lulu. It reached number one on the science fiction section, and it was there for about a week or, or 13 days. It climbed up and down. Um, but yes, the Archons took me... It's the, the, I'll explain that the Archons is fiction. Um, it is a fiction book, uh, science fiction. And I don't know what comp- compelled me to write it, but it, it certainly opened my eyes to the underworld. Um, I've never had any interest in Lucifer, or if they prefer Satan or the devil, uh, but I had strangely developed an interest in him mm. and his agents, the fallen angels. And the book is based on modern times, uh, and is, I think, I would say, conventionally written, um, but it is a thriller. I've been told they, they consider it to be a thriller and that I was pleased to hear that because funny enough, I had went to see a medium. It's a long story. I never believed in any of that, mm. but I went to see a medium 23 years Which ago. Which is strange you saying that because Philip's a medium, your brother, your, yes. your twin. <laughs> he can't read for me. I have to pay to have a reading. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're too close. Maybe you're not paying but, him enough. <laughs> but uh, 23 years ago when my grandmother died I went to see a medium ready to poop poet it's all explained uh, we'll talk about that later uh, but I went to see her and she said to me she knew that I wrote fiction I said nothing you write science fiction 
She said, I see you being published in the future because I wasn't published then. And she said, I see thriller books with you, science fiction and thriller. Yeah. Well, imagine my surprise 23 years later that someone would coin the phrase thriller for the archons. But it is about the chipping program, the book, hmm. about the government and the dark forces implementing, ironically, before COVID-19 and the conspiracy theorists of Mark of the Beast. I had written this last year, and it was published first on Amazon. I had released it on Amazon um, a, a mid-year, I think, and it didn't do very well. I was disheartened, so I pulled it off and went to Lulu, which is in America, and when they published that, it did very well. It did very well. So it's funny, isn't it? Chopping and changing, but it is to do with Mark of the Beast. It is to do with the chipping program and how they subtly introduce it into people. So, and of course, it is Mark of the Beast. Yeah. As a thriller, it's a thriller. The Archons is a thriller and it has a very dramatic ending. Very dramatic indeed. Now, the demons in there, they look beautiful. They're like us. In fact, they're made to look beautiful, which attracts people to them. Their magnetism. People are drawn to them and they listen to them. So they're put in positions of power and the people trust them and the governments, but they're, uh, they're, they're uh, conforming to Lucifer, their master, King Lucifer. And they, they are orchestrating a plan to subdue the people of Earth. So yes, that is, I, I actually, do you know I nearly gave up writing that, David? I was disheartened. Because I, uh, during the process of writing that book, I was disheartened. I got disillusioned mm. and I stopped. But something, something made me continue with it to pick it up and to carry on. And I'm so glad I did. And I love dramaticism. I'll also say that when I wrote that, I listened to pieces of music. You see, dramatic, dr dr dramatic orchestra music, film scores. And when I listen to a piece of music, it paints the scene. I see the scene. Yeah. It's like there's a chapter in there in the Archons where they have a chancellor. And they're not, they're not humanoid, by the way. They're, um, big old nasty brutes. They're from the realm of hell. We call it hell. But he, their boss is coming for, for an update and he arrives. Big, they have technology. It's not ethereal and nonsense like that. It is, they are technologically advanced. They use transfer from time to space into our realm, and they have to wait for Pindar. Now, when Pindar, Chancellor Pindar, he's from, he's quite high up down there in their government. He's part of their government. Their boss is coming. And the one thing that I heard a piece of music, and the scene wasn't done yet. I almost didn't include it. But when I heard this piece of music, I saw him emerging with the drama, and I then imagined the scene and wrote it so it's down to music a lot of it when i do fiction hmm do you, do you think uh, would you like to see it made as a movie that one yes i i i as i said i've developed an interest uh, in the fallen angels the mythology of them and um, I, I, I think it would make a good film because, as I said, it was a thriller and the special effects wouldn't be too enormous yeah. because it's to do more with the people, the actors. The, it's all about the, the, the heroine is a woman, Pamela, Pamela Hargreaves, and she discovers this plot. She's a journalist. I think it's the best thing to do. A journalist sniffs about everywhere. So she would gather data and she would put it together and, and she becomes a threat to this very handsome man, very stunning man. Of course, they would have to be, but he's not human. But she finds out, she discovers that he's not human. And then she discovers the dark secret of what they're doing and what they're up to. So, yes, it would be lovely to see that as a film. It's funny, someone asked me, you know, would you like to see this film? I said, well, yes, but that that road is cutthroat. It's it's yeah. absolutely cutthroat. So I think we'll just leave that for now. Yeah, and you'd just have to watch your back, I think, because people try to uh, step you in the back. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Or you always have imitators, people who copy the work and make it a little different yes. to suit yeah. their own taste. Uh, I mean, I believe the wonderful J.K. Rowling, I should think she's had people trying to copy her work, and I admire that lady very much, yeah. J.K. Rowling. Or, very much indeed. Or you also get that they'll try and drift away from the actual book itself, like they've done with so many other books in the past. You know, yes. you've got the basic yes. story, but then they'll sort of enhance yes. it to make it more dramatic or whatever. It yes. just takes away from the whole book, doesn't it? 
Yes, but I am. Same as we've done with the Mia. Most of the James Bond films have sort of uh, gone off on a tangent. <laughs> yes, that's right, David. And the thing is, even if they made it into a film, would I like it? Because, as you said, they change it. Mm. Uh, they go off on a tangent. I mean, but there is a, a gentleman who's a friend of mine of Phillips, David Saperstein. Yeah. He's a lovely man. He's the author of, he's the creator of Cocoon, the author of Cocoon, the film. He wrote the best selling book. He's a lovely mentor. He's mentored us for, oh, since 1985. And he's, and I, I sent David a copy of the book and I said, look, what do you think? And do you know he wrote back? He absolutely loved it. He said, it, he said he loved the idea of embracing religion in with science fiction. He was referring to this religion um, into science fiction, of course, of the demons, the dark angels, the fallen angels as well. You know, so he quite liked it, and that inspired me. And he doesn't just, if he doesn't like it, David, he will tell you. <laughs> he will tell you if he doesn't like it, but he loves it. And that really gave me the perk to carry on trying to promote the book as best I can, yeah. being a one-man band on Lulu and that, yeah. you know, so it did okay for a while, it did very well. It's a beautifully produced book, I mean, I've got the hardback copy here, Did you? was it in a paperback as well, or, or was it only hardback? It, it's uh, available in both hardback and paperback. Right. I felt perhaps the two mediums would be nice if people could afford to splash out a bit more and have a nice hardcover, or they would just want a, a throwaway paperback uh, cover just to read and stick on the shelf you know yeah. so it's nice to have the two mediums of that yeah well, the one I've got here I treasure actually it's a, it's a lovely book <laughs> but, uh, oh, hey, hopefully it will, be, it will shoot back up the charts again after this show <laughs> I was thinking of doing a sequel but I think I'll leave it to see how it does right. I think it's best just to see how it does um, because as I said, it does take me a long time to write a book. Yeah. Um, Philip, Philip seems to be able to write them faster than me. I'll say you've both been it's very productive yeah. over the last couple of years, haven't you, with books? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. I've, I've been working on one this year, uh, with Philip Mantle, the lovely Philip Mantle. Uh, he's, they call him UFO royalty. And he asked me you know, my opinion of a book he was writing called Introducing UFOs. A young person's guide. Now I'm also an artist, and he would like he would wanted mm. me to do some illustrations for him. So I did, and he liked them, and I'm very honoured he's included them in the book. So I've been doing that this year. Uh, Philip and myself, Philip Manfield, have been very productive. His his book, Introducing UFOs, A Young Person's Guide. I believe he's bringing that out in November, but that features some of my illustrations. So I was busy doing that, and of course finishing off the other book, The Digital Demon. Right. I mean, uh, your artwork is absolutely fantastic. And if I may, when, when this go, goes out, uh, I'd like to put some of your artwork on the Paranormal Dimensions page, if that's all right with you, Ronald. Absolutely. You have my permission, Dave. Thank you very absolutely. much. Because it, it, uh, your, your work, it actually knocks me out a lot of it. It's, it's fantastic. And uh, so it's all about Philip Mantle being the... Uh, uh, UFO, U, UFO royal, royalty, I think you called him. I, yes. I'd have thought, I'd yes. have thought more like the Godfather of UFOlogy. <laughs> I think that's a nice word to use for him, the Godfather. I think that's a nice word to use for him. Yes, he's been very helpful to me. He has, yeah. And very, 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 he's got me in contact with a lot of people. And, uh, with, with the, with the digital demon, he was an enormous help to me. Yeah. Um, with that, the new book that's coming out soon, which we're going to talk about later on. I mean, obviously, very he, he has been around for quite, you know, a lot of years and, uh, obviously he's been, you know, the work that he's churned out over the years has been amazing, hasn't it? It's, uh, in his investigations. Yes. And, uh, yes. Yes. I like him because he's level headed. Yeah. And he, he doesn't have any nonsense. That's what I love about him. If he doesn't believe it, he'll just say no, no, no. He won't accept it, and I like that. And in a, as a mentor to the UFO field, I mean, he's uh, so I like him for yeah. that. You know, he 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 analyzes things, and he doesn't have any nonsense at all. So what I like about Philip also is the fact that he will admit his mistakes because he made the, quite a big boo-boo over the alien autopsy at one time, didn't he? But then when it was actually presented to him that it was. Um, or fake, he certainly came out and investigated yes. it thoroughly and wrote a book about yes. it. And um, yes, you know. yes, I mean th these things will happen. It's called advancing when we we're much we become much wiser. It's like as we we're saying about uh, knowing something 
first hand and then, then gaining data and knowledge on that. We learn from experience and, you know, this is the thing we have to be very careful, all of us, in the UFO phenomenon because we have to tread very carefully mm. because there is so much skullduggery involved Absolutely. in the UFO. As we know, I mean, recently they showed me, um, I saw a scene of an aircraft landing on a battleship, an aircraft lander. And as this plane was coming down, the camera zoomed in on a triangular ship on the battleship. And then it carried on following the jet to a landing stance. Now, when I saw this, David, when I saw this video, I immediately knew it to be a fake. Right. Because my argument was quite, and I, I think a lot of them are, many, many fakes. We have to be so careful. They're so clever nowadays it's, to make these fakes, I know. Yeah, Yes, the thing that convinced me of it being a fake was the fact that when the aircraft landed and they zoomed in on the ship, it then continued to follow the aircraft coming to a halt, coasting to a halt. Now, no one would continue to follow a conventional aircraft if they have just discovered some incredible spaceship parked on a battleship. They would be honed in directly on that ship and they wouldn't lose sight of it. Mm. That is what caused it to become a fake. Mm. I'm like, I, I'll make you laugh. <laughs> I've adopted you, you always make me laugh. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> <laughs> I've adopted some, I hopefully, skills of Sherlock Holmes. Right. Even though he's fictitious, I will tell you one example that will hopefully make you laugh. <laughs> there was, oh, many years ago, there was these scenes of these skeletons. They were allegedly very large skeletons like giants that walk the earth. They were like people, but they were giant skeletons, and they had these alleged archaeologists standing over them. Now, these were three different pictures from three different continents, and the skull was visible. So what I did was they were all raving about these giant skeletons apparently being unearthed. So what I did was I zoomed in. Fortunately, all his teeth were visible mm -hmm. on the first one in one of the countries, and then I looked at another one, and his teeth were exposed. <laughs> now, I honed him on the teeth, and one of them had a particular ch chip in it. So I looked at the other photograph, and it had the same chip. Right. Yeah. Using Sherlock Holmes' method of deduction, photoshopped. They were in different places on the Earth, uh, and I wrote to this website and told them, I hope you do realize that the pictures you're distributing are absolute phony. I never heard anything back from them, David. Nothing. Mm. So the skullduggery continues even today. As I was saying, the battleship with the aircraft landing, it just reeks of fake. Yeah. You know, you have to be so careful. It's smoke and mirrors, yeah. you see, as you well know. Absolutely, yourself. I do know. Smoke yeah. and Unfortunately, when, when people are shown that something is fake, they'll still carry on with it a lot of the time. And, uh, yes. you know, there's, there are yes. several people out there we could mention, but we won't. But, um, the flat yeah, but, earthers as <laughs> yeah. well they will continue to believe that the earth is flat yeah. you know the thing that what I'm saying here as well is the fact that um, when you look at it like that they will continue to make you believe that it's flat I had one chat on my Facebook page um, I had made some comment uh, some not sarcastic I would say it was rather like a a small comment denouncing the theory of the Earth being flat. Well, my goodness, he, he, is it carpet bombed or carpet blanket bombed me with images of these purported Earths being flat? Oh, right. Now, I said I had a, th I said I had a theory on why the Earth isn't flat. You see, when I was at school, and this is in my book, I think it was in Twin Souls that was published in 2012. Mm. You see, the teacher showed us a diagram of the U universe and they had the sun and they had the planets circling it well to me to me alone i questioned about the big bang and he was not having anything of it he said it, it just happened i said so nothing just happens when i looked at this picture of the universe to me it looked rather like an atom the sun is the nucleus yes. at the protons <clears throat> and neutrons of the planets and satellites that circle around it everything is spherical to a degree all planets are spherical and I realized that, of course, it would be round because if we are based on the atomic level, it would be circular and in motion. Everything 
everything here is in motion, even though we can't see it is in motion, so it would be circular. Yeah, I, the, the amazing, so the Earth what, you, you say, what you've just said there, I, I agree with entirely, because I had, I had thought of it the same way myself. Because yes. it's like, um, if you've got a, a tabletop, for instance, it's almost like a complete universe of atoms and electrons. <laughs> Yeah, so it, we are material of the universe. We're material. We would be, so we would be based on the sphere because it seems to be so, like the atom, the atomic level. It would be circular and it's always in motion. Yeah, I mean, who's to say that we are not just part of a chair leg or something? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right. Yeah, you know, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, I maybe not. I don't know, but it's just that when you go down to that sort of level, um, maybe that's why the universe is endless. Because it, yes. it's just complete different structures that so you go up, yes. in, up and down in, in size, you know. It it's, gets uh, it gets very complicated. It, does when it, it gets com very complicated. I, I used to sit there. It used to blow my mind. Think trying to think of something that that goes on and on and on is endless. You know, you just cannot imagine it, can you? You know. That's right. I mean, I mean, I I don't know myself. I mean. I do know that if there is an edge, we can't see it. And if there is an edge, there must be something beyond. People say, why, then, why, why must there be an edge? There may not be. It may be infinite. I just think we're too young and too inexperienced to actually answer that question. And as for them to suggest that the universe started with a big bang is annoying because they cannot say, they cannot know. Yeah. They don't know. It's a nice theory. But nothing comes, you know, cause and effect doesn't start from nothing. Mm. It just doesn't happen. Something triggered that. And even before that, what was there? Blackness? What is that? Yeah. What is space? Is it material? Yeah. We can go on and on and on. I think we're just too young as a species yet to get our heads around that fact. I admire them for searching. I admire them for looking deeply into it, David. I admire them. I admire the scientists to try and fathom it. We're creatures of curiosity. We need to know. Mm. But it's going to be a long time yet. Oh, yeah. I, I, should think our extraterrestri I should think our extraterrestrial friends might be a little bit wiser to that. A little bit wiser. Yeah. Well, do you think that maybe they'll let us know one day? No, <laughs> I don't. All I'm thinking of at the moment is um, you've just opened up a whole new theory because you said that if the universe does come to an end and it's got an edge... We've got the f the flat universe theory. <laughs> <laughs> but I said there could be something beyond that. Are we in a bubble? Is what's beyond that? I know. I think I'm too inexperienced to answer that. Yeah. But I think some logical, uh, a logical approach, as the uh, uh, astronomers look into it, very clever people. They're trying to. You can't. You can't blame them. They're trying to form a picture. Yeah. I mean, it's so massive. We can't even conceive the edge of it or the end of it. No. It may go on forever. It might be infinite. It might even be, as they talk about, an illusion. We don't know, do we? No. A physical illusion. But I used to, you know? when I was younger, I used to sit there trying to imagine the world going, you know, the, the universe going on and on and on without an end. You, you just cannot, because you, we know everything's got to start at a, you know, a beginning and an end with, with everything else. Yes. Like a book or a TV yes. show or a film yeah. or whatever. And uh, to think of something that just goes on and on infinitely is just, you just can't get your head around it, but... Um, well, it's based on human math. Yeah, it used to give so me nightmares, I know that. <laughs> we're, we're basing it on our own interpretation, our own mathematics, yeah. where it may be entirely based on another principle we have yet to uh, understand. Absolutely. OK, right, now, let's move on to your, your whole new book, which is not out yet, which I believe is coming out, was it early next year? Ronald? Um, uh, sometime in 2021. Um, uh, uh, yep, it's called The Digital Demon Countdown to Disaster, and it's my own exploration into these UFOs and aliens, or what we call the greys, um, and also where their, their origins might originate. I can't say, but we can speculate. I think it's ridiculous. This is one thing I'll make you laugh. I mean, I've read so much nonsense where people say, I'm going to just elaborate a little bit, whether they're from the Andromeda galaxy or they're from the, from the draconian star system. Mm. And some people say they're families with them and they're very peaceful. The argument I make in this book is simply put, is that uh, if I don't believe they are peaceful and I don't believe they are friendly, because they've absolutely showed no or demonstrated no 
ability of this or any understanding of kindness, um, especially from these things we call the greys. I mean, I don't believe they really are what they are. Hmm. What I know, I know when you were on the show before, um, I mean, can you clarify that, what you mean? Yes. The thing is, the aliens seem to be able to change their faces as swiftly as they can change their ships. If we look at the 1950s onwards, they were the conventional flying saucers. Before that, they were airships or ballistic missiles. Yeah. They've adopted their program and now they become triangular ships and uh, orbs of light, you know, and the faces were from the fairies to the Nordics to now the greys. I don't believe what we're seeing is truly what they really are. I believe they, well, I won't call them shapeshifters, but something is able to uh, swiftly alter to what's in vogue. Yeah, yeah, I can see what you mean. Uh, they're real. I believe they're real. It's just I don't believe they're what we think they are. Yeah, or, or I wonder if this... I mean, do we actually manufacture them even? Um, I don't know. Is it, I think we do manufacture some of them, don't we? Because some of them do seem to appear when you think of, about them. That, yes, it would be based on conscious thought. I mean... We're talking about the whole new realm. I believe they're physical, I believe they're real, but mm. I don't believe a lot of them, the, these greys, I don't believe they are from another planet. Apart from the Betty and Barney incident, I think something has copied them, has made them in vogue. Something is attached to our psyche, and it understands us very well, and it's able to interact with us on a level we cannot even understand. I mean, I have seen the UFOs myself. I, I would consider myself to be, I hope, a very hard critic, and I am. I never believed in this until I saw it for myself. Mm. I, didn't, I did not want this. I did not want this, and I mean it. And people say it sounds so much better when you say you didn't want it. I didn't. I had no interest in them until they imposed themselves on us. Mm. And it's the curiosity that caused me to investigate these. I mean... I have seen things beyond imagination. They've been hanging over our heads, mine and Philip's. These things were not of any kind of technology we could conceive of here on Earth. They have no uh, illusion. They were not atmospheric distortions. They are physical and real. What they are, we cannot say. We can only speculate. But there is a force here on the Earth. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. So... We're dealing with a whole new paradox. I mean, you know, David, as you probably have uh, gathered yourself from people who say, or you've read, that they went to the moon with the aliens and danced with them, yeah. or they've been taken to their planet <clears throat> Venus and yeah, Mars yeah. and whatever. But as we broaden our intelligence, as we, and Philip Mantle said this as well, as we advance, and this is his saying, as we advance and we reach these planets, um, we find that there's nothing there. They up the program to something more elusive. So I think the wonderful thing about the UFO community, the genuine UFO community, is that we try and put all these, we pull these into a jigsaw puzzle. I liken it to the pieces all over the place. And we're slowly trying to coherently put the pieces together to form a picture. What that is or what it will present, we don't know, but we are still putting this picture together. The research we have done or I and Philip have done as well, categorically confirms that it's not physical in the nuts and bolts sense. It's not physical in the nuts and bolts sense. It is of an ethereal kind that can manifest into reality. We're, called, we're talking interdimensional. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, I've got to say, on the cover of the book, is a, quite a terrifying... Um, Reptil a reptilian type alien on the front. Uh, it's just a piece of your artwork again. Yes. And yes. It is actually. I, I thought it, it's probably one of the most terrifying pictures I've ever seen of a of a of a of a, of a well, What do you call it? Humanoid or whatever. I don't know. But uh, it's a, he's a demon. <laughs> yeah. He's one of the fallen angels. Philip Philip Mantle said the <laughs> same. He said, "You know, Ronnie said it frightens me to death that cover." Yeah. I thought that was hey, well. If that works, then that'll work. I was going to have an angel on the back. Right. I was going to, to but I well, thought. Well, you have. You got a picture popular. of you. <laughs> I don't think I'm an angel. <laughs> but uh, w what my book looks into, it is. I will say that it is autobiographical as well. I thought 
to allow the reader to understand my character a little bit more, to get to know me a little bit more. I've added um, uh, specific moments in my past, especially my childhood, mm. so they can get to know me and my character because I don't lie. Everything in that book is the truth, and I question a lot of things, you know, to form some kind of picture of what we're dealing with. And I do know, I, I made Philip laugh. I said, you know, it doesn't matter how far we go or how much research we do, we are still, at the end of the day, left with a blank page, and that's the interesting thing about it. This thing, whatever it is, this force, or these aliens as we call them, is always one step ahead. It seems to hide in the shadows. It can't be caught. Yeah. Um, it doesn't... It, it, you, you, we read of these stories of people being abducted and of hybridization programs, I'm not too sure about that. I don't see why an alien race should build a new kind. I don't see the point in that. If they're that smart, they could just build robots to work for them. They don't need yeah. a new progeny. They don't need it. They wouldn't need it, really, for goodness sake. They're so advanced. Why would they need it? My conclusion in that book is very dark, and I, I make a few pointers uh, about that. And I, the conclusion is... I, I would, I, I'm going, it's going to cause some controversy, but what doesn't? You know, it's going to cause some anger and people are going to hate it and you'll have those who will, uh, uh, who will contest my theories. But you see, one thing I've discovered in the UFO field is you will have some people who purport to have all the answers. Mm. So they, these things they call the mantids and the, the greys and the reptilians, they have, all, some of them have all the answers and I've listened to some shows watching them very carefully, not just once, David. I watch them again and again. I listen to the testimony, and I'm left feeling and reeling with anger because I come up with a conclusion that either they believe it's real or it's absolute baloney. Yeah. You know, see, B, if something can't be measured, if something cannot be measured or proved, people can have a field day. You see, there was one man, Philip and I, had contact with who was absolutely so full of rubbish and I'll put that politely <laughs> and he believed that he was in contact with the military well once they say that they damn well know that if you try and find information about that you're going to you're going to hit a brick wall yeah. because they'll know that you'll never get any answers from the military so then it becomes a conspiracy so they win they can they can wear a smile because they feel that you, they, you're never going to get anywhere yeah. with that testimony. And they put the thing out uh, that they know more than you do and you can't get that information. That's right. Yeah. And it becomes a conspiracy and, of course, it sells. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm looking through the book now and there's some quite terrifying pictures in it of uh, some of your... I, I'll call them inventions, but because you did actually dream up these uh, beings, didn't you? Or are they from actual experience? Because I know you, did, you have had some um, scary experiences. I, I did have one. Um, uh, I've seen the UFOs many times, mm. um, but there was only one incident when I was 13 in 1982, which completely baffled me. Um, I have illustrated the humanoids uh, and the presence they, they gave me afterwards, which was horrific. Mm. And it wasn't a present in the gift type form, physical gift. It was something they showed me. And it took me 30 odd years to work out what that meant. But they were not, they were covered in a kind of suit. They weren't the greys. I didn't feel they were, I didn't even know what greys were then. I didn't know anything about UFOs mm. really. I'd heard of them, but I'd expressed no interest. I'm a kid for God's sake. I didn't even believe in mediums. Yeah. But they were strange. But they weren't nasty. They weren't nasty. Hmm. I was just reading, um, there's Christopher Turner's done the uh, foreword for the book, hasn't he? And um, he's, de he's dealt a lot with um, um, the reptilians, because uh, he, he had, I think it was a few years ago, he had a, a conference, uh, Don't Mention yes. Reptilians, which I went to, yes. which was uh, quite he, an amazing uh, experience. Yes, he's a producer of Don't Mention the Reptilians. And um, he works a lot. He's done a lot of work with the best-selling author Paul Sinclair, who's a wonderful, wonderful man. We've a highly respected researcher and best-selling author, Paul Sinclair. And I was very honoured to have that written by Christopher because of his research into them. And he's like the rest of them. He looks into it. He doesn't just accept nonsense. He will look into it yeah. and he will analyse. And um, and he, I, I was very honoured, and he's he's written a wonderful forward 
uh, for the book um, and I was very honoured I asked him I said Christopher would you mind um, endorsing the book with a with a with a forward and he was so lovely he said Ronnie yes of course I would now I've also got someone else in there a gentleman if we're talking about reptilians um, I was very honoured uh, I've been in contact with Kenneth Johnson on a fan type level he's the creator of V yeah. the miniseries yeah. Um, I remembered watching that in the 1980s, and I loved it. I do, yeah. And it was great. And yeah. In its day, it was quite groundbreaking, wasn't it? With the uh, yes, with the the faces yeah. peeling off and the reptilians underneath. Yes, I thought that was very. I mean, even then, I didn't believe in UFOs or aliens. Even after seeing the doctors, mm. I pushed them aside. I didn't want to know about it until later on, when this was all coming out. Um, but he, I wrote to him and I said, he likes to be called Kenny. I said, Kenny, would you mind if I used the cover of your, your V book in my book? And he said, no, sure, you go ahead. I told him what it was about. I was very, I've heard from him a number of times, and he's very good with his fans, and I was very honoured. So I had permission from Kenny to use the cover of his V book. I've read all his books anyway, read his books. And what a lovely man, so you do come across some very, very lovely people who will help you. There are some who won't help you, um, but a majority of them have been absolutely well. I would say 99% of them have been wonderful. Yeah. All with this with this book, you know. Yeah. I know there are quite a few people that uh, you think you can trust, and then you find you can't. (laughs) I know that all too all too well. (laughs) I'm always polite. Yeah. I mean, I will never, I will never, uh, never denounce them, but it's it's it is privately remembered yeah I know. You know some of them that you know you you feel that you know i i have no ego to bruise i'm not after fame or fortune and if people and this is another thing we will come into this now we will talk about this now we all i hear is people saying when you've written about a, an alien encounter and i must make it quite clear i am not an abductee this was a singular event that happened to be in 1982 I believe there was purpose behind it. What exactly? I don't, ex- I don't entirely know. But there was meaning behind it. I'm still trying to decipher the doctors. That's what I call them, mm. the doctors. Mm. They weren't unpleasant. But the thing that people do is that when you write a UFO book, they immediately call you a gold digger or you're after fame and fortune. Yeah. As I stressed before, I didn't want anything to do with it. And perhaps that was a good angle to take, to be fresh, and to be curious but guarded because as I said as you well know there's a lot of skullduggery and still even to this day a lot of nonsense mm. being broadcast about these UFOs and I, I, t- I hope I take a very rational angle to it if I'm shown something I will look at it again and again there was I remembered a video they had of these purported greys walking about, I don't know if they're coming off a ship, it's very brief they look realistic, they look very good, it was very clever but David, you know, when I looked at them again and again, because I deal with CGI with my art, mm. um, I deal with CGI, they, they, you will always know that they are contrived because there's a slight stiffness sometimes the way they move or they alter their angle, there's just a slight stiffness they looked contrived yeah. so I never believed that I believe that they do have dead bodies I believe that they have crashed I do believe that entirely they become physical when they enter our dimension and they have retrieved certain materials I believe that especially the Roswell encounter mm. I believe it's been I believe it has been completely muddy so we can't trust the main emphasis of what happened but something did happen something crashed there yeah sure and you know that I mean, they will never release, never release. If they have pictures of that, you will never see them. They are buried deep, and I mean deep. You are never going to see, I don't believe, a true picture of an alien. There was another footage of one I saw, which I had to laugh at, with one grey allegedly walking across in the woods, and I knew it was fake. So we ha- it, it's, like, it's like, as I said, smoke and mirrors. Yeah, and also, in this field of study, the UFOs, you're walking on eggshells all the time. You had to be so careful mm. how you approach how you approach the subject. You had to be so careful with the testimony. Some of it is real, but a lot of it is not. Especially when they broadcast these ridiculous YouTube videos of ships passing over and they look so fanciful. Yeah. And you know that you know they're fake. Yeah. You can see straight away they've been 
uh, uh, created by using CGI, which is so freely available now and much cheaper yeah. for, dom- for domestic use. Yeah, I would, I would say that probably 95% of the videos on uh, YouTube are, are fakes, you know. I would agree with but you on that, absolutely. So that it, some of them are real, yeah. some of them well, are that's genuine. The, that's the, US- the problem, you see, sorting out the real ones from the fake ones. Mm-hmm. Because uh, when, you, when you know that 95, well, approximately 95% may, may be fake, you know, how do you know when you're actually looking at a real one? That's the real problem, you know, without, um, you, you really yes. need to know where they've come from, who's put them up yes. there, you know, what, what's, yes. you know, um, yes. and you really need to and question that's, that. That's the really nasty thing about this subject is the fact that it muddies the pool even further yeah. and makes it more of a mockery yeah. when, you know, when, when you are trying to decipher what we're seeing and I do not believe the majority of them, as I said, come from another planet. Um, I give reasons for this in the digital demon. I'm not going to broadcast those reasons now. People will say that's a summer selling gimmick. Well, yes, it is. Hmm. You know, why not? Well, yeah, you don't want to give know? away what the book's all about anyway, do you? No, it's... because pe- people pay to see a game of football. Yeah. You know, they're not going to know who's won it. That would defeat the whole object of the game. It's like a book. You're not going to give it all yeah. away. Well, it's like a film, isn't it? They pay you don't, want to, it. You don't right. know what the ending's going to be, do you? Otherwise, yeah. what's the point in going to see it? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and even if they call you a gold digger, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you can't be... Cause I know for a fact there's not a lot of money involved in all this, is there? Um, I mean, you, I, no. hopefully you'll make back what you, you know your expenses and my, and hopefully make a little bit of money out of it, but I know you don't make a fortune out of them. No, I don't think many researchers do. I think some do uh, in the higher departments. Uh, some figureheads do. Mm. Uh, they get paid quite a lot of money for uh, special appearances, but the, the 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 middle or lower man does not know. It's it's a poor man's profession. Um, but I wouldn't, well, if you call it profession, I would say a poor man's pursuit. I would correct you on that. It's a poor man's pursuit. Yeah. Well, it's kind of a, <laughs> but it's I, kind of a hobby that, but that, that turns into, I don't know, what, what would you call it? Um, something you've just got to do, isn't it? I, I, as I said, when, when we seen them, when you see them, my God, when you see them, I had, they have been hanging right over our yeah. heads, the triangular ones, the, sh- the, the, the lights. I saw them. I was very calm. I have always been calm, apart from the doctors. I lost it with them, and anyone would, for God's sake. Mm. But when they hang over your head, and you have people telling you that what you saw was just uh, a drone, or uh, lights in the sky, or cigarette butts, or Venus, they'll come up with any conceivable answer or conventional answer other than what they were. Mm. When you see them, they are shocking. And you know they do something else. When they appear, they seem to suspend time yeah. briefly. Mm. They, you, your watches are not affected. And someone will say, or people will say, that's a cop-out. No, it's not. They seem to create a bubble because the one when we noticed, the last one we saw, I haven't seen anything for four and a half years now, nothing, nothing. But when we saw those as the last thing, Philip and I were together, we saw them. They were over our house, over us, right over us, and they were low. They were low, very low. They weren't in the sky. I have to reiterate this point. They were really low. Um, when I spoke to Philip, the voice seemed to be like, you know, when it snowed and it's heavy snow, mm. you know, you know, when you, you hear the cry of children mm. in snow or you cry uh, and the, or you laugh, yeah. it's sort of muffled. That is exactly what we experienced. And I realized that what they were doing was they were cleverly shielding themselves or us from other people seeing it. Isn't it yeah. a nasty, this is a nasty trait. They deny other people seeing them bar from you. Yeah, I remember because we were at your house, so you were telling us about this, and I, I couldn't quite get my head around the fact that this thing's coming down so low, And because I, I think I remember asking you that uh, did none, of your na- none of your neighbours saw it. And no. we, we tried to hammer out what, and um, I think we came to the conclusion that they must be distorting time somehow. Um, yes. And also making like a, a tunnel that only is visible to you. Um, yes. I don't know how I, to I, describe I, it. It's, it's very difficult to describe, isn't it, uh, Rory? It's, yeah, yes. I, I couldn't myself. It's only a theory, but our road is always busy. You see, there's a pub up the road. Mm. 
and that's that's open until God knows how long. There's cars coming along it all the time. When these things appeared, you could hear a pin drop. Nothing was there, nothing. It was as if the whole place was like a ghost town. Everything was strange. I believe Jenny Randalls, the, the, one of the UFO researchers, yeah. um, she called it or, or coined the phrase the Oz factor. Yes, yeah. So it's the otherworldly factor. So it is, that's exactly what it was like. It was muffled. And I saw them speed off very smoothly. The way they moved was incredible. Not even our own aircraft could move like them so smoothly, and they just shot off. They were so fast. Mm. I sometimes wonder if they are their electronic eyes, if they are the... You see, the orbs, they were reported in the Second World War as Foo Fighters. We're probably the, seeing the same things, but we call them something else yeah. now. Yeah. So, you know, cameras, electronic eyes, obso- observers, mm. you know. Yeah, that's um, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's some sort of a this, um, you know, interdimensional thing that's going on. Whether they're extraterrestrial or not is another matter. Um, but certainly, I think they're, they're distorting yes. time somehow. You know, to only become because yes. we do hear this story quite a bit from other people, very similar descriptions, don't we? Darren Cooper, for instance, his big, uh, the, where that came down quite close over the top of them, and he described a very similar uh, occurrence didn't he with these big uh, that, that b-shaped uh, craft I, I wouldn't know i haven't heard that testimony oh, david right. but I, I i will say that um i will say that there is they were very strange i tried i will tell you that when they were hanging overhead i was very calm but of course very excited and curious mm. So I did beam some thoughts to it or try to say we're of peace or something i can't remember do you know I got absolutely nothing back? It was cold. They were just there and nothing. I felt nothing from them. Yeah, so that's interesting because um, some people would yes. say the opposite, wouldn't they? They'd say, well, I sent some thoughts and I got these lovely thoughts back at me or, 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 or maybe horrible thoughts back or something. But to yeah, actually no, to say I, that you got nothing back is, yes. is actually admitting something, isn't it? I did try and communicate. I mean... It sounds ridiculous, but I sensed some kind of thought, but there was nothing. It was as if they were aloof. They're a power above everything, and they, they just hung there, and then they, they swiftly moved off. I will never forget, and this is the wonderful thing. I'm privileged to have seen them. I will never forget watching them move off. The way they moved was very strange, but beautiful. They are so so way ahead of anything we have mm. the way they it's just the way they moved was strange but it was incredible and yes i i didn't get any any animosity from them no peace nothing i got nothing from them they were just there yeah and it's like you're just there and they're above you and uh, uh that's how it was was it a, was it a silent departure or were, was there noise there was no noise, nothing whatsoever. There was not a sound. You could have heard a pin. So not even a whooshing noise or anything like that. No, nothing at all. They were silent, as dead as the night. Very strange, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Yeah, very incredible. But the the book uh, does describe that incident, uh, as well as a number of others. Also, some of the chapter headings I'll read for your lovely listeners are. Uh, uh, some of the chapters, or one or two of them, if I've got it here. I've got it, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes, the curiosity didn't kill the cat. We are not going to harm you. Um, we come in peace, do they indeed, really? Uh, it's got, uh, the Ouija board deceptions and the occult. That's that would be interesting. Yeah. Yes, yes, um, yes. Well, ch- the uh, chapter I, one is the fabricated lie. Well, we've just been talking right. about a lot of that, so. Yes, that's right. So, and we, there's a lot in there. And as I said, it is all, it is autobiographical, um, which I thought was very nice. Um, because it, it, and I just speak of only the truth in it. The truth, trying to understand certain cases are uh, in the book. I've got Kathleen Martin in the book. I've mentioned Kathleen Martin, her books, the lovely Kathleen Martin and Earl Grey Anderson is in there as well as um, Neil Geddes Ward he appears in the book now Neil um, I talk a lot to Neil he's lovely he's like many others he has no nonsense um, we try and bash ideas about about the greys 
um, I, I, you know, the arguments of where they might come from, what they are. Yeah. You know, we're not, I don't, as I said, I don't conform to this family nonsense. I never have, you know, when some people say that, and I'm not going to name any names. I'll be hated for saying it, but that's my own personal opinion. Sure. I'm, I'm entitled sure. to it. If they're entitled to their, they'll, they'll broadcast their anger or their, uh, their, their, their contesting it. But that's my own personal thought. I don't believe that at all. I think it's nonsense. Mm. And these aliens, oh, I believe in the greys, they're real. But I don't believe this is exactly the final thing we're looking at. I don't believe we're looking at the real McCoy. I think they're smart and able to change themselves to suit you or to suit um, the environment or, what, as I said, what's in vogue. Mm. You know, this thing is ancient, I believe. It's ancient and it's been here for a very long time. Absolutely. Oh, you mentioned Neil Guinness Ward. Uh, he's another um, presenter on. Uh, he's got another radio show on the, on this network, hasn't he? The Paranormal the Peep Paranormal Show. Paranormal Peep yes. Show. It's called. Yeah. <laughs> he's yes. been on. He's been I, a guest on this show too, which was a very interesting. Yes. He he talked. He spoke a lot about fairies and things like that. And, yes. Uh, yes. But yeah, very he's nice. A brilliant. Guy. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a, a brilliant artist as well. He, he's yeah. also an author of a book, and is an incredible artist. He's, Artist is absolute, artistry is absolutely wonderful. The people he can draw, I mean, I can't do people brilliantly yet. Um, I'm working on it, but certainly monsters and robots and ships, because there's no comparison to be made on them, you see. Yeah. So with a demon, if I create a demon, there's no comparison because we've never, we, well, I've never seen a real demon myself, but um, you'll probably get some people who have. Um, some of the cases I would believe. I do believe some of them are there. As I said, I'm not denouncing everything. There are some cases I don't believe, but some I do, mm. especially with the afterlife, with people who've been brought back from the dead. Sure. They managed to save them. There are some people I respect, especially the neurologists, uh, who have seen the darker aspects as well as the lighter. I mean, you know, it's not all bad, my book. There is some hope in there, I think. Um, but certainly it does, I hope, answer some very valid questions as to these things we call aliens, yeah. you know, David. Yeah. So I think it was very good of you to do an autobiography-type um, story as well. And you've got a couple of cute pictures of you and Philip as kids, uh, children. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's with our grand. There's a great picture in where you're both holding little suitcases. And I've got to say, I can't tell which one is you. <laughs> no, I, I actually don't know which one is me either, David, so I left that out. You're, you're quite <laughs> identical, yeah. Yes, I can't tell. I mean, I was bitten when I was younger. Uh, I was bitten on the lip by a dog. Um, it, my fault entirely. His name was Snoopy, ironically, and I was yanking his tail, and Snoopy was a Labrador, and he bit me on the lip, and so I deserved it, so I had some so stitches you, put on the side of my lip. Uh, so I'm... Trying to find that on there with a the magnifying glass is rather difficult, but but I have a love for dogs. I love dogs. Uh, we yeah, we had a Labrador anyway. His yeah. name was Prince, and he was lovely. So I've always loved dogs. I have not poodles or little ones. I tend to find that they can be a little bit. But I love beagles and Labradors, and as you say, you've got beagles. beagles. Nutty, nutty, I've met your yeah, beagles. Yeah, nutty beagles. Bob. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Give them a mention, and, uh, Bobby and Jody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we came over and met them, they're lovely. Uh, I love dogs anyway, and I I, I always um, just seem to have a good affinity with them. They, Philip always jokes that when I go over a house, certainly the larger dogs, they always come up to me first. He gets very jealous. Oh. <laughs> I said it must be some kind of aura or something they can smell of you. Yeah, you know? they do. They come up. And they do seem to sense things, don't they? I mean, Jill, you know, you, you know you've met Jill a few times. Um, yeah. Her, her grandson, when when he comes over, now he's only like th or four now. But they're so gentle with him, you know. Like where they'll jump, they they'll jump up with us, or, or, or you know, sort of knock you over, or that. He's, they're, they're so careful and gentle around him, you know. So they yes. do. They must know that he's a child, and uh, yes. you know, a, 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 a child pup. Yeah, that's how <laughs> that's they see him, like a little child pup. And you have the yeah. So I, I love. I've, so I've always loved dogs. But the pictures included in the books, I thought it would be nice to have a few. Sure. When we were younger, well, I mean, one of them, I, we did live in South Africa um, for uh, a year and a half, I think, but we were supposed to live there for good, but circumstances caused us to come back. Mm. But we had moved to South Africa in the mid-70s uh, to live there for good, 
but as I said, circumstances we uh, caused us to come back. Yeah. Um, but I didn't mention Africa in there because there was no relevance to well, the I topic think in question. At that time, there was a very a lot of uh, political upheaval, wasn't there, in the mid seventies? I, I was too young to know, but for me, uh, I loved the place where we lived because it was like Snoopy Land. Mm. I would call it that the, we lived in these huge bungalows. And I used to love it because there was so much space there. And I remembered the sprinklers always going. They were always on. It was very hot, but the heat wasn't like we have here. The heat was very um, different, but we did get blisters uh, on our shoulders. Right. I have marks off from the blisters, but I did love Africa. Um, I, mean, I called it Snoopy World, Snoopy Land, because later on when I watched the, the, the Snoopy cartoons, the streets they portrayed reminded me of Africa. Right. So it was just very charming for children. Yeah. I don't think it was probably as charming for adults who had to work and pay the bills, mm. you know, mm. but it certainly was charming for us. And ironically, we went to a school called Oliver Lodge. Oh. So Sir Oliver Lodge was one of the, um, one of the uh, gentlemen who was pursuing the, the medium aspect, uh, along with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. They were heavily into the psychic realm, mm. weren't they? They were very heavily into yeah. Mediumship to, to, to try and prove it. Yeah, it was. I mean, if I if I may, I've got this picture with you with the suitcases, I, I might. I, can I put that onto the Paranormal Dimensions page, Ronnie? Is of that course you. I, I mean, I'm not going to take all your pictures of it, it's silly. Because I, but, but I want to put the you know some of the book, uh, the cover, I, the cover up and everything, so that people know what's coming in 2021. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, I can send you the picture, oh, yeah, David. Lovely. I'll yeah, send please. that to yeah, you, so you don't have to scan it. I think it. it's I quite a nice it. little cute picture. I think it's uh, it kind <laughs> it kind of it, it kind of explains you and Philip. I think in quite quite a lot of detail in that picture. <laughs> yes, I've got it here, and I'm looking at it, and I still can't see. I can't tell who is who. I remember the briefcases, though. Um, I remember them very well. That's when they really made them to last, didn't they? Yeah. They were proper. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were proper not, cases. Yeah, like real, yeah, they were. They were solid. They're, they're probably still in existence now, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I had to go for a shot, I think you're the one on the right. But um, I couldn't say 100%. I do you know. I'm looking at that, and I cannot tell, David. I would not know. Um, it's funny, isn't yeah. it? That's the thing of being a twin, an identical twin. <laughs> I mean, Philip's... Philip is seven minutes older than me, yeah. um, so there's not much difference. So he's the oldest, but he and he certainly lets me know it. <laughs> <laughs> it's being a twin, I think, with this subject of UFOs, I think it's a blessing in a way because we do argue, not in a horrible sense, but we contest um, ideas and we we bounce off each other very well. Indeed, especially yeah. when we're watching, when we look at testimony or we're looking at footage. I mean, Philip and I will have opinions, but more than not, we agree the same on the uh, opinions. And as we said, the UFO uh, subject, it annoys me to think that some people have used it as a circus act, mm. whereas you have to approach it very carefully, and you have to approach it with a degree of satire and a degree of no-nonsense, because you, you are dealing with a subject that has been made a mockery, not all the time, mm. But I think we're moving into a new age where we will discover that, you know, this age-old dogmatic view of us being the only inhabitants of Earth is going to be shattered. Yeah. We're going to find out that we are not alone, and man might sensibly take the approach and logically thinking that there must be more to us or out there. Yeah. What these things are still, I can't say. As I said, I do believe on civilizations on other planets. I don't believe we have seen them. And if they have visited us, it's been isolated, like Betty and Barney. I believe that case. I've always believed that. Mm. They, they arrived, and because they showed Betty the star map, and they did what they, it's just what they did to them. That I mean, they tried to pull Barney's false teeth out, mm. but they couldn't work out why they couldn't pull Betty's out. I think that is gold. Because it goes to show as they examine them, they didn't quite understand, which would prove that they were newish to our world. They were new then. They were perhaps um, uh, scientists or researchers that were passing or on a mission to analyze the human race. I do believe that absolutely, 100%. But uh, 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 because people are questioning different kinds of greys, but my argument is my, in my book is, 
it, could it be possible that something is copying them or something is cleverly copying things? Yeah. Um, a force that uh, is doesn't seem to be very pleasant because we then move into the cattle mutilation. Yeah. yeah. And they are associated allegedly with these greys. I don't know how they make the connection, but we're going to have to uh, uh, just trust it. Um, because of these, uh, the Skinwalker Ranch cases, as well as Bempton, where Paul Sinclair has been doing research with Christopher Turner and other people, where these things are like portals, where they come through. There's, so there's something quite ugly mm. on, top of this, on top of something quite benign. Mm. You see, it's juggling between all this information and trying to form a coherent picture. There are people also that are suggesting that these things are from the future. Yeah. Now, yeah. they can believe that. I personally don't. And there's a reason why I don't. It's a logical assumption. I put it in my book, The Digital Demon, but I'm not going to announce that on radio because that is a very strong view of my, mm. my own about the concept of time travel, you know, and uh, the implications of it. I don't believe they are from the future. I don't believe that. I think that's nonsense. Mm. I believe that I do strongly believe always from all the research we've done uh, they are interdimensional. Certainly the greys, what we call the greys whatever they are or whatever they purport to be. It's a fascinating subject, mm. David. Do you not think sorry, do you not think that I mean, if you look into the future and we're talking about time travel, do you not think we'll ever get to that point where we will um, master time travel yes but it's going to be messy to begin with I, um, I, I've, I've looked at this in my book the concept of time travel it is a possibility as my grandfather always said or taught me you consider anything and everything a possibility nothing is impossible is improbable but it's not impossible so time travel is a possibility um, I believe they're going to have to I don't believe they have done it yet in our age this time no. I don't I, I believe they have tried yeah, I think they've missed the I belt with they, it, yeah. yeah they've been messing around with it I mean we we move on to the Philadelphia experiment where the Alderidge the battleship Alderidge mm. wasn't it called yeah. was uh, apparently or allegedly rendered invisible for a time uh, when they were messing around with magnetic waves on metal, I don't know what effect that would have caused. I think they were, if it did happen, they would have been experimented. They wouldn't have been entirely uh, uh, conclusive of what they were. They, they wouldn't have known what they were entirely doing. They wouldn't have known that they were trying to, basically, they say they were trying to render invisible to radar. Mm. That was the whole point of it. But when you beam magnetic waves on a metal hull, I don't know what kind of effect that will cause. It would bugger the thing up, yeah. excuse my friend. That's for sure. I wonder if it's like a 5G effect, what you're talking about. Yes, I mean, I, I mean it, it, it's, a, it's one of these things that's a conspiracy theory. You see, we're not going to know what mm. happened, whether it did or not. I can't say whether it happened or not. But I wouldn't be at all surprised if the military were actually tampering or messing with magnetic waves, yes, a distinct possibility. They would push their they would have pushed their science to the limits and who could blame them really? But when I learned that there were people on board that ship when they performed the experiment, if they did perform the experiment, I'm horrified. Yeah. You wouldn't have personnel walking around a ship beaming waves onto it. You just wouldn't do it, would you? You would test it first and then see what well, the effects think, are to then... I think knowing what we know about um, some of the experiments that have gone in the past with um, well, so, well, the Nazis and even uh, the, the Americans with their nuclear weapons testing, um, I, yeah. I, I would consider that they probably did have some people on the ship, you know? Yes, they... And I do, I, as I understand it, they went crazy or, or, or even died. Yes, it burst into flames, some of it. Oh. Um, I, I, well, I, I mean, I can't say whether that happened or not. I'm not qualified no, to answer that. We're, but we're it, only it's, conjecturing, aren't we? It's, uh... Yes, but it certainly wouldn't surprise me that they would push, they would push for, uh, uh, for answers to, you know, to, to riddle scientific riddles. I mean, wasn't, wasn't Einstein uh, involved in that or something? I wasn't sure, allegedly, if Einstein was involved. Certainly one of the high-ranking scientists. Allegedly, in case we get sued. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't I who could say? Who can tell? Yeah. Who can say for sure? That's right. But it wouldn't surprise it wouldn't surprise me. But I don't believe, as I said at this moment, that they have successfully managed time travel as of yet. It is a vastly complex vastly cons- complex subject and of course we must consider the fact that the future is of millions of variables that are not set. Mm. There are millions of variables that are not set. We could never reach the future because when we get there, there's still a future to be yeah. had. You, you won't reach it. But what kind of future will they arrive at? I'm, as I said, I explain this in depth in my book. I, we do, we do, uh, we do cross into time travel in that as well because I, I love thinking. And I'm no scientist. I am absolutely no scientist. I'm not academically uh, of academic worth, but I do like to think very deeply about certain things, yeah. uh, the outcome of possibilities. Of, and indeed, time travel will be possible. But as a, to begin with, it's going to be very messy. Yeah. Well, it makes you wonder. I mean, if, if you think about it, is it actually possible to travel into the future? You'd think that maybe possibly travelling into the past because that's happened, but travelling into something that's not happened yet, I don't know, it opens up a, I, a whole new ball game, doesn't it? Yes, um, it, it, it opens up the question, the, 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 the question of if you go back and you shoot your grandfather. Yeah. We've, 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 yes, would you exist? I don't know. I, I personally believe that if you go back, you will go to an alternative history, slightly different. Yeah. You can't touch the edge of the reality. You can't go back to what it was. I, I'm not going to say any more, but I have, I've, I've looked at this, uh, very deeply. I might be wrong. Yeah. And I admit that. Uh, you know, I admit if I'm wrong. But it is something certainly to consider. And it does talk about the future as well. The past and the future. I don't see why not. If you can go forward, you can go back. Because mm. we go to the, re- the realm of parallel worlds, don't we, in that, re- in that respect. Yes, it also refers to time travel being a misconception. Time is merely a calculation. Yeah. We gather time from the rotation, as we know, from the planets. So it would be, have something beyond what we conceive to be. They show on these films a fancy clock and you turn it back to a certain year. But the, 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 that period of time wouldn't be known. You see, it's only a calculation. It could not be known by the machine. So we're looking at something beyond that. You can't just switch a clock and say I'm going to go forward um, 3,000 years there would have to be uh, you you would have to have some kind of some kind of not just measurement you would have to have a a, 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 a link you would have needed a link yeah. Yeah. to determine that would be 3,000 years you can't just jump forward by the whim of a clock as I said it is, as I, just, I have I try to explain it but I can't exactly on radio. <laughs> I put it. I I, I've actually made. It's it. not an easy thing to get your mind around, no, is it? No, no. Time travel would not be. So I've explained it much better in my book. You know, we've just made the, the Terminator series. We've just killed those, haven't we? The Terminator. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger when he comes back as a robot. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, that's to, right. To, yes. to kill the the, the young yes. son, so that the future doesn't happen with the. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, 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 they're amusing, but I don't think that would happen in that way, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you have control of time, you can do much better than that. Yeah. I think that coming back and just killing someone, you could do much better than that. <laughs> I think it's a very, if we had it, it wouldn't be available to the likes of you and me, that's for sure. It would be in military hands. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm not denouncing the military at all. I think they're very smart, but it would, and perhaps it would be wise that they kept uh, shot of it, not the government. I would say the military. Mm. Yeah. We wouldn't want politicians getting <laughs> their hands on that. But certainly, for experimental reasons, or you know, it, it, I don't. I just don't think it's going to ever be available for the likes of you and me. Um, but what is worrying is what they'd do with it if they did discover it. What would they do? Yeah. Well, I don't know if you've read um, Jim Penniston's book and Jim Penniston and Gary Osborne's book. Uh, Jim kind of thinks that maybe you know the Rendlesham. Uh, Yes, RFI. I have the copy. Now, yes. Jim and Gary kind of have gone along the realms of uh, it could be people Time from, from yeah. the uh, the future. Yeah. Um, 
I, 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 the machine he described is too small to hold uh, any conventional person. I mean, that's what he described. It could be a mechanism of sorts. I, I don't yeah, it's know. Yeah, it's almost the size of I, a, I mean, a large car, isn't it, kind of thing. So, um, yes, but then again, we head back to the future. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> In right. In a DeLorean. I mean, yes, Jim Penniston saw it, so I think his interpretation of it is, is, is best. If he believes that's what he saw, then we must... Uh, take that as gospel because he was the one yeah. who witnessed it I, I, I'm not qualified to answer that if he feels it's a time machine well, then I, it quite I possibly don't, might I, be yeah, I don't think he I, I think what he was trying to do is go along the road go, along the lines of it wasn't extraterrestrial he kind of he kind of got the feeling that it was something interdimensional and he kind of ended up with the theory that did they come from the future I think he's asking that question as well um, mm. The interesting thing is, at the end of this month, uh, I've got Gary Osborne coming on the show, so right. hopefully um, he may enlighten us a little bit about what, um, you know, more. Well, I, mean, I had him on the show um, earlier on in the year, but uh, Gary yes. has, has gone into the more mathematics of it, and he's going to be linking a lot of the things to the Sphinx and uh, ley lines and all sorts of things. So yes, because it had hieroglyphics yes, on it, didn't it? Yeah. It had symbols yeah. on it. Yes, that's right. I don't know, but um, uh, I, I, yes, I mean, he saw something very bizarre, very strange, and it, uh, I mean, he was very brave because uh, um, I mean, I should imagine he was also frightened as well, a degree of. of, of, of um, What's the word? A degree of apprehension well, uh, about it. Yeah. But he approached it and touched it, didn't yeah. he? I mean, he he says he got a download and a, 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 of um, a binary download, and all of the uh, ones and zeros were put into the book. And I think it was about, I think it was sixteen or fourteen pages or something, a binary code. Uh, and he kept that quiet for all those years because he thought he was yes. going crazy. And yes. it was only by yes. um, the fact that he was going through his book one day when he was on, I think it was 2010, and John Burroughs yeah. saw the dot ones and zeros in his book. He never presented them um, to John Burroughs. John Burroughs saw them by mistake. And yes. he said, what are those? Yes. And, um, of course, Jim has had to show them to him, and he said, that, uh, yeah. well, why have, you, why have you kept those quiet all, this, all, all these years? And, uh, well, yes. you know, and yeah, kind of, that's, that's the story. And then Jim said he, he thought he was yes. going crazy. So I can understand why he kept it quiet. It's my, like myself and the doctors. Mm. I mean, that happened when I was 13, but I did not come out with that until I was uh, in 2012. Yeah. When I published the book, it was published by Capel Ban at the time. Um, and that was published, I, that was the first uh, case I, I had uh, of the doctors. And people asked me, why did you keep it quiet for so long? And I told them, well, it's not the sort of thing then you could talk about. This is explained in the yeah. book why I couldn't talk about it. You had so many negative people. And you, you just couldn't, and it was so bizarre and different, uh, with these doctors, that's what I call them, um, that, you know, it took me a long time, but I, I wanted to publish the account, and it, in this book, The Digital Demon, I go much more into depth about them, um, I still don't know what they were, um, they were heavily masked, um, that perhaps is a clue, Perhaps they were being kind to shield their difference. I don't know. It's only a supposition. Um, it, it, I, it, it, it's very bizarre. But I, 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 they did something to me, and um, I've been trying to find out what it was. Uh, their present, as I said, was instigated very cleverly, mm. and it took me 30 years, over 30 years, to work out why they had shown me that. So... In, ca in the case of Jim Penniston, I can completely understand why he kept it quiet for so long. It's something that, you know, it, there are reasons behind yeah. it. And of course, he, then he gets people coming out and saying, well, you must be lying. You've written that since then, you know. And um, Yes, yes. But how could a child of 13 yeah. describe these things to people? I mean, you know, and but there again, as I said... You, people won't take this for gospel. They'll criticise it. A lot of mm. them, perhaps, they'll say it's rubbish. But you know, David, I don't care. What is important, and I said this again and again, I have seen things beyond imagination, and I've seen them again and again. Not the doctors. I've only seen them once. If they call it an alien interaction, it will be considered an alien interaction once. Mm. 
but I have seen the UFOs and I'm just pleased I have seen them because it was those events that pushed me eventually to research yeah. them, to look into the topic more seriously, to try and separate the wheat from the chaff. You've got so many people out there who are uh, fancifying topics or they're, they're elaborating and I can't stand mm. lies. One thing I will say, I would never lie about anything. Well, knowing you, I mean, knowing you and Philip as I do, I, you're probably, well, I would say that you're probably two of the nicest people I've ever met. I can't see you ever telling a lie about anything, no, you know. <laughs> no, yes, I, they would go against my principle. You I see, know that, when we yeah. were brought up, as a many, a many of the older people, you're brought up to embrace the principles. You don't lie. If something's happened, you tell it black and white. How could I explain the doctors to adults? Mm. How could I explain it? I kept it quiet because I was terrified of them. Do you know they scarred me for a long time? Mm. They scarred me with fear. I used to prop books up against the door. I used to prop books up my back. I put an old guitar up against the door because I was terrified of something coming through the door. Mm. And they didn't, ironically, they didn't come through the door. But I was a kid. I was, you know, naive. But so that if anything came in, it would uh, knock the guitar and wake me up. I was terrified of the dark. I wanted a light on after that. They screwed me up big time. Mm. But I don't think they were all bad. I still can't make up my mind, but it's all in The Digital Demon, my book, the encounter with them or the the the, the uh, arrest made by them. I don't like the word abduction. Mm. It sounds it sounds now preachy. It sounds too, you know, UFO-y. I can't explain the word, but the arrest, mm. because they snatched me against my will. Uh, there might have been purpose behind it. They certainly told me there was purpose. There was purpose. I understood why they were doing it, but I didn't know if I could trust them in that respect, what they did. They weren't, as I said, nasty. They weren't, they were, they, they were quite all right, but it was the horror of seeing them as well as the horror of being arrested by them. Mm. That was the terrifying thing of being absolutely powerless. Of you are held in their power and there's nothing you can do. I wept before them, David. Mm. I wept in front of them. I, I actually cried before them. Hmm. Do you feel that maybe you'll ever see them again? You, you'll get a, another interaction with them? I have no idea. I had no feeling afterwards. Um, nothing. There's or nothing. Do you, or do you I, feel I, you I, may have even had some interaction without you knowing about it now since? Do you know, David, if I had, I cannot say. You just don't know, no. No, no. No, I'm afraid that is uh, 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 unknown. Mm. So no, I'm, they I'm kind of wondering if maybe they would have assisted you in writing this book, you know, from a, a, um, a suggestion point from point of view. No. You know? no, I don't believe that. I believe they 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 because they try to make me forget it. And right. the, this is the whole point of what they did to me afterwards. I won't I won't uh, I, I won't disclose that. But they tried to make me forget it in a very clever way. Mm. Very clever. They were very smart. But um, I think what they showed me was their undoing. Because it didn't work. That led me down the rabbit hole. Mm. And um, it forced me, basically, to pursue this. Because uh, it recalled it through the thing they showed me. I'll leave it at that, David. Yeah, because sure. it, the rest of it's in the yeah, book. That's right. Well, uh, do you feel you you will um, continue afterwards and do another book? Um, I am actually, what I'm doing at the moment, um, I think I've done enough with the research in The Digital Demon for this edition. Who knows, I might write another book later on in some years to come about the UFOs. At the moment, I don't plan to. I'm working on a science fiction, and this is the nasty thing about it, because I work on fiction, the people will then try and say, well, you're just mixing fiction with fantasy. Mm. I am not. I have never done that. We're rational-minded creatures. The science fiction book I'm working is politically based, and all I'll say is it's called She. Right. S-H-E, and it is about the future. And um, that's all I'm going to say about it, but I'm very excited. I am going to illustrate the book. There's going to be perhaps about 10 or 12 pictures in it. 
illustrations because what people I, I hope they will realize when I work on my art it does take me a long time to work on an image mm. um, it doesn't just whip up in an hour this can take me weeks oh you can see when you look at the images you can see how long it's going to take you they're amazing they're yes. absolutely amazing thank you very much David that's very kind of you and I'm I'm I'm, I'm still learning I'm an amateur I, I, I have no qualification. Oh, I have an, I think an A level in art I got when I was younger, but I don't think they consider that, that's not a grade anymore. It's all changes, doesn't it? All changes, mm. the levels of grade. But I'm an amateur, so I've learned, I'm self taught. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, I don't think you can teach your art. I think you've got to have something within you, haven't you? I think uh, it's one yes. of those things that you, you're just a natural at it. Yeah, I think you can learn it. It's it, it's if you're driven to do it. If you if you're driven, then you will do it. It's like anything. If you pursue something, you really will get results. If you keep if you keep pursuing at it, you'll get results. It's like anything. It's like as we were saying about the scientists with their with their experiment, their feasible experiment of the Philadelphia experiment. If they pursue that, if they pursue it and pursue it, they may receive results, not what they expect, but results nonetheless. I'm just pleased my results have turned out positive yeah. and not negative, David. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all we're all glad of that. Anyway, yeah. Ronald, it's been fantastic having you on the show, and um, I hope your book does very, very well for you. I'm sure it will, and I'm sure it will be another number one. Put it in your notebooks. It's the Digital Demon Countdown to Disaster by Ronald Kinsella. So put that in your diaries for 2021. Anyway, Ronnie, um, Thank you. it's been fantastic having you on the show. Thank you for sparing the time to come and speak to me again. And Thank um, you very much for having me on your wonderful show, David. You've always been good to me, uh, always been very well, good to been, me, you've always been encouraging well, you and, and Philip kind to me. One of, two, two of my dearest friends, and I respect you and love you both so much. It's, uh, oh. and I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to see you again after all these horrible months of lockdowns and God knows what else has been going on. And yes, yeah, <laughs> we'll go out for dinner. We'll go and have that. We'll have, go and have that dinner again. We'll go and have dinner. Absolutely. Somewhere nice, David. <laughs> on me, somewhere, on me this time. Somewhere in. Oh no, no, we'll all chip in. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Oh, and say hello to your lovely mum for us. I oh, will indeed. I'll send mum your love. She'll send her love too. And, uh, oh, I send our love to Jill too, right. David. Mum sends her love to Jill as well. Oh, Thank well, you. Anyway, I'll let you go, Ronnie. Thank you very much for coming on. Bye bye, Ronnie. Bye bye, David. <laughs> bye bye. Out there, thank you for listening, and um, I hope you enjoyed Ronnie talking about his new book and his and his previous book, which was a number one bestseller. Anyway, right, that's it. You've been listening to Paranormal Dimensions. I'm David Young on the Paranormal UK Radio Network. Thanks for listening. Paranormal Dimensions is as bright and powerful as our celestial star, the Sun. And although it's expending thousands of pounds of energy every minute of the day, have no fear. There's plenty left. Dimensions is a regular feature on Mondays on the Paranormal UK radio network.